John here guys and today we're talking about the Hyperlow Airshot man Lover, the rebel, movie star, your heartthrob and mine, long shot. I have been watching these Hyperlow frames come out for the last several years I've always been super intrigued um, by the designs and the overall principles um, that are being put forth by Rich over at Hyperlow. And part of the reason why I really had to jump on the bandwagon at this time was, okay, I've reviewed most of the other freestyle frames out there, but the air shot takes it a step further in the evolution of these designs and actually getting my hands on it, wow. Um, this is an interesting uh, philosophy that is going through. Now, the principal differentiator in how this thing is going to fly is by reducing the vertical drag put forth by the arms on this freestyle frame. And they do that by making them super thin. You can see they're only about, what, five mils thick right there. And how do they get away with that? Well, you can see they are actually double stacking them. So it's 10 mils thick in the vertical direction but that reduces the amount of drag on all four corners of the arms. Now to also give back some of that strength, there is this optional brace right here. So this really prioritizes a different flight feel and I like frames that do that. Kind of like how Catalyst um, tries to achieve their smooth flight by having your front and rear arms on different planes in a lot of their designs like the Smooth Operator or the Bang God. This one does it by reducing the overall area of drag. And I really have been curious for the longest on how something like this flies. The air shot is the next evolution in this design and putting this thing together, it's like, wow, the engineering that's going on over there is right up there with Catalyst and Armitan. I have to say, um, those are what I would consider normally the two leaders in design engineering. And you just, you know, you're building an aircraft. You want to have the best possible design features in there to achieve a flight feel. And there's a couple different ways that you can go when selecting your frame. Do you want maximum durability? Do you want maximum flight feel? Do you want maximum component protection? Um, and this one really gives you a good all around mix, prioritizing the flight feel, but also giving you a high level of component protection. Why do I say that? Because he uses this sort of variation of the floss arm design, which is still to this day, one of the best motor protection options on the market. And in addition to that, it's not super apparent at first glance, um, but if you really look in there, the camera is actually mounted on this front bumper piece that is a separate piece from the rest of the frame. Now, why is that notable? Because it's five millimeters thick. So the rest of the frame are these thinner pieces of carbon sheets that are like, you know, two mils. The arms are five mils, but this front part, should you impact, is five mils thick, super thick. The braces also offer some additional rigidity as well as front end component protection are also five mils. So you really have uh, a, an extremely powerful uh, frame right here. Now, some people in the previous Hyperload designs have said that, you know, these braces end up being a weak point. Um, but if you've flown other frames with braces, you just know that's always the case. And that's by design. You want these really small pieces of carbon to be able to break and absorb that impact if you were to hit hard enough so that the rest of your arm, your motors, and of course your stack inside all remain safe. This design has sort of a sandwich um, thing here. The little secondary arm that sits under there is sort of milled out so it fits on there perfectly, my goodness. And then there is sort of a long, uh, <laughs> if you remember like on your Apex build, it has that little key that everything kind of locks into as far as the arms. This is a similar thing, but the key is much longer. I'll show you a, a picture of that. Um, you, one of the things that you notice right away is how long this frame is. Now that will get you that arm separation, which should yield very smooth flight. So low drag, 
long um, sort of a footprint well, it should give a really interesting flight feel. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing up in the air. Um, the other thing that is nice is there is just a plethora of these 3D printed parts. I have the DJI. What? The plethora. Um, Vista camera holder right here. I have the um, Immortal T holder at the front. I have the GoPro style mount at the top plate. And then I have another GoPro style at the bottom plate. That is for if you are flying in front of something and you have your camera angled backwards. Uh, so there is so much versatility. You can see on the arms, on the rear arms here, I have these wire um, holders right there to kind of keep everything nice and neat. The other thing that I really, really like is that this frame um, has a lot of these 3D printable designs up on Thingiverse. In fact, I found um, some arm guards that were designed by the Hyperlow team on Thingiverse that I printed out on my Prusa. So from day one, I will have arm guards on here. Um, so I really like that, although this frame is an expensive option, we're going to talk about that a little more in a second, um, you do get something for that. You get access to the full design library of all these parts, should you ever need to reprint them, or should you need to print something that you didn't purchase to begin with. So for the non-printers out there, you can buy all these parts, and for the printers out there, you can buy just the base frame and print accessories as needed. Um, so I will say this frame does have a hundred dollar price tag, which puts it up right alongside, you know, the Armitan ones, the Apex, uh, and some of the Catalyst designs, although Catalyst and the Bangod and the Shocker Tank have actually reduced those prices down to about 85 bucks. So, um... I would say this is for people that want the absolute smoothness on freestyle. I will give more comments on the flight field once I actually get it up in the air, but I can see that there would definitely be an audience for this type of a frame. I don't think it's for people that are maximum bashers. And what I noticed that in my community, there are two types of freestylers, maybe three types. There are the guys that just want to do tricks over and over and over and over until they get a super awesome a dive combination with a Matty flip. And those are the guys that are gonna be breaking the most stuff. They're gonna be smashing. If you watch some of the Road to Ride guys or Bot Grinder, they'll say they're going out flying with only one or two quads, but they got like 15 spare motors because they're breaking stuff constantly, swapping it and keep flying. For me though, I break more things on the racetrack uh, when I'm freestyling. I do push myself to do some tricks, some nice shots but I'm really looking for some dynamic footage as opposed to just doing tricks. I do do tricks, but my main focus is just getting really cool footage. So I could see why this, if you don't need that maximum protection, it's really hard to beat something like the Bangod or like the Badger if you want maximum camera protection. And especially if you're gonna be running the DJI system like I am here, you can see this Vista holder at the back, um, which I'm really looking forward to get that going you want to be able to protect that expensive camera. And I don't think this is going to offer that amount of protection, but like I said, it does offer way more protection than I thought it did at first glance. I think most impacts are going to be around this angle and you're going to hit this front five millimeter bumper before you actually smack the camera. So it should be safe in most instances in all but the hardest of crashes. I also do like that there are more keyed pieces out here. You can have a little bit of an extension on the carbon out at the back if you wanted to mount your antenna to it. Um, there's just so many different options. I love the modularity and thoughtfulness and completefulness of this design. So many accessories um, to really accommodate your build. I like how there is so much separation between your stack and the front so you really have a lot of room at the front for your receiver for capacitors for leds anything you might want up there there's also a lot of different options on um, there are some hyper low some hyper low led race wire that you have the option of getting so really really awesome frame stay tuned i'm going to get this thrown up on the dji system and probably test some cool motors very soon thanks guys